What makes a legend? How does ordinary become extraordinary? How can I be legendary? Welcome to Legends Only. Raymond Joseph Tevez Laurel was born on May 19, 1971. Hailed as one of the top Filipino fashion designers, Rajo has designed outfits for icons in entertainment, business, and politics, has won local and international design awards, and has showcased his creations here and abroad within his 28-year career. He is the creative director of family-owned House of Laurel that serves a demi-couture line, a ready-to-wear line, and garment manufacturing. Rajo is a loving partner of 16 years to his other half, Nix Alanyon. How did Rajo Laurel become Rajo Laurel? Let's find out here on Legends Only. Welcome to Legends Only, Rajo Laurel. Hello, darling. I'm so, so nice ex- to see you. It's so nice to see you, and I'm so excited to dig in a bit more uh, of your life story and share your journey with everyone. Because the idea of this whole special series is to inspire people not to be yeah. the next Rahul Laurel, but to be them, the first them, and maybe they or can better. share. Yeah, or, or better, exactly. It's always nicer to be better than the previous generation. Absolutely, 100%. And I wanted to start with college Raho. Now, off cam earlier, I told you that you've shared the story many times, but for the benefit of those who have not heard, check sure. if my summary is correct. So okay, go ahead. I'll try to condense this. You knew very early on you wanted to design. You were designing dresses for Barbie dolls, and you got to enroll for a fashion course, a fashion design course in New York. Pero pinauwi ka ng tatay mo dahil gusto niya mag-business ka. And while you were taking up business, in La Salle, your term is serendipitously nadala ka sa Malate, which is where your eyes were opened to the design and fashion world. And you were sort of living two lives as a business student and as a fashion intern right. um, or apprentice for Louis Mamengo. How'd I do? That's perfect. That's the perfect <laughs> cliff notes. <laughs> so my question is... What was your daily hustle like? It it just so happened that we had a lot of breaks for some strange reason. And because Louis Mamengo's shop, which which is very near La Salle, was just walking distance. So instead of hanging out in the cafeteria or just sort of like slumming, essentially I was able to sort of like split my time being an assistant and just sort of like be being surrounded by that world. I think because I was so in love with that particular craft and, and with the idea of just being surrounded by that fashion, that it didn't feel that I was rushed or I, I felt that I was half. In a sense, because you know the, 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 what they're saying, that parang kung gusto mo, you won't make any excuses. Gagawan mo ng paraan. You're going to be absolutely making it a priority for you to be both. And I guess also because everything sort of like was easy already in college. Easier in the sense that my goal was to just finish, get my diploma, give it to my dad so I can actually start my career. The turning point actually was when I was doing my thesis, wherein I really had to make a decision. Make a decision by saying to Louis, listen, Louis, I can't come in the whole week or can I finish my thesis first and I, can I still be your assistant? And I had to choose, so which is very difficult because it was then I was already sort of like, really you had to make an adult decision whether or not to focus on finishing your thesis and graduating and go on with your life or give it all up and become sort of like a fashion designer. So I had that sort of like moment wherein should I stop school and already continue working because I was already starting my career at that particular time. But there was no denying that I'm glad that I finished my business course. I I graduated with a degree in human resources. So it's one thing that you finally get to do what you want to do but another thing to sort of make your mark in it. So those early days of trying to get the word out that I design dresses, how was that like? You know, it's just all about the right time. The first thing I thought of, because during my time, there was a lot of design competitions. And I just joined every single one. I won some and I lost some. But more or less, I was always sort of like already getting to be noticed. And then it was also the beginning of the birth of the of the hard copy publications of Mega Magazine. And, you know, Mega Magazine was really one of the first uh, magazines then. And I was sort of like about to finish already with school. And I illustrated very well. And I literally just 
marched in there and I said, hey, listen, I want to work for you guys. Give me a job. This is what I can do. They eventually made me illustrate for the magazines for articles. And then eventually they liked it so much they, they gave me a, the back page of, they call it Style File, which I illustrated the trends for several years. Me being in the door of, the, of that fashion magazine made me even able to navigate which voices or which, which uh, megaphones I can, I can attract in terms of towards my brand and my label. I so didn't and, know that. Yeah, I, I, was an, I, was, I was an employee of Mega Magazine. Something popped in my head. So you told your dad na mag industrial design ka, na parang engineering when you went to New York to study fashion design. And yeah. then you asked Louis Mamengo if you could intern from him. And then you stepped into Sariap's office to say, I want to work in Mega. That takes lakas ng loob. Where do you think you got your lakas ng loob? Or just sheer naiveness. Really? I, you think? I, I, it's more... That well, and lakas na loob. Um, okay. My first paying job as a fashion designer was at this boutique in SM called Julia. I was second year high school. High and school. I was already, yes, yeah, second year high school. But I was tall. My paitita, who had the boutique also, said, Yan, Julie Lee, I remember this, I was 15, is looking for a designer. I didn't know anything. I brought in my sketches. I drew very well. She hired me on the spot. That was my summer job. I remember I was earning 2500 a month. Malaki na yon. I I remember this vividly because I had to tell her at after the end of two months, because about two months of summer vacation, I have to quit, I have to go back to school. My boss, Julie Lee, said, why can't you just sort of like work while you're still there? No, I have to be in high school. And then she was shocked. You're in high school? <laughs> I mean, maybe because if you want, you will do it for me. I mean, for me, what's the worst answer I can get? No. Which is sort of like part of already my experience. There's so many doors that have been closed anyway to myself, even as a, as a young child or as a young adult. But once you get a yes, it's, it's a go, right? So in this social media landscape and in a lot of industries now, a lot of people, a lot of us aspire for relevance, right? We want to be relevant. At the same time, what matters in the long run is the longevity. And you seem to have balanced both in your many years in the industry. Steadily, diba? I guess the question is, what is your mindset towards relevance? and longevity? That's a beautiful question because for me, you also have to understand you don't want to be like this amazing firecracker that just sort of like be a one hit, one, one note. And it really depends on your goal. Why are you there? Why, why you question yourself? What are you doing? What, what do you want to be? What, and in my case, now that I'm, I'm in it for about 28 years, I, I really sort of like, it's not anymore about constantly being fighting for attention or, or me, 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 I want, I want the energy. It's really about your craft. It's really about be, be going beyond already the, the ideas of, 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 of commerce, but it's relationships, relationships in terms of how I can take care of the people who work for me, all of my employees, how I can be able to sort of like sustain it. It, it sort of like goes beyond any more what uh, my original goals were. But in my case, it's still about the craft. It's still about clothes. It's still about making women and men feel good about themselves and it's a continuous um, effort and even though it's very challenging now because my work is very tactile and right now we're so far away that you won't be able to sort of like sometimes feel it there are many ways to sort of like keep in touch and keep it relevant and relevant is such a sometimes it's a dirty word because what is relevant to somebody might not mm. be relevant to you and Beautiful. and the quest the quest for relevance is is sometimes a really dead end because you need to just really focus on you and how you affect others. And, it, and once you get that grounding, perhaps you'll be able to see that what's more important is um, relationships. I love this. Oh my gosh, I hope everybody hears what you <laughs> just said. I want to pick on something that um, you mentioned, which is, I do believe that goals evolve, right? Through the different phases of our life and our career. And you mentioned, Kanina, your original goal. So may I ask, what was that original goal of starting out Raho? And when do you feel 
you sort of like hit that goal, I mean? You know, I didn't. My goal was world domination. I wanted my brands in New York, in Paris, in the world. I wanted to, to land in the papers of Vogue. I had big dreams, Bianca. I really wanted to be that. I wanted to be Calvin Klein. I aimed high. And then we tried. We really, really tried. And it, the epiphany really was my brothers and sisters in New York Fashion Week in the middle of winter. We were all wet in the snow, shivering, trying, bringing our samples from one showroom to the next, trying to sort of like be cool and, 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 and bring our clothes there. And, and everyone was was sort of like saying no because this was the recession. And my sister and I look at each other and said, Anong ginagawa natin dito? Why are we really doing this? Of course, it was a big blow, but we restructured our goals and we said, you know what, let's go home. Let's figure it out how we can do that. And then that's when we began the House of Laurel, the ready-to-wear brand. The restructuring was about not reaching the goal and making our goals a little bit more realistic. But in, in many ways, it made us happier because it became easier for us to sort of like realize that, yes, it's not about just... Remember the time we were dressing up? So many actresses abroad, Tyra Banks, that was a timer. Eh? And we even landed on the cover of World um, WWD. So, but each time because that we were, were, we were doing that, we were always hitting a wall. Like we wouldn't get orders or if the orders would, would come, the payments were delayed. So it was almost like a cat and mouse detail. So the truth of the matter was that by not... Reaching the goals, I felt that I became more satisfied. Grabe. That story, which by the way, it's the first time I, I heard it. I've heard yeah. bits and pieces of it, but told by you now, it's like, what? Nobody would look at you and think that you did not reach a goal. I mean, diba? And yeah. that's so powerful for anyone who does have a dream that is a bit hard on themselves when they don't reach it. It it's, might it was just hard. be... It, it was hard. But, but You were led somewhere that you were absolutely meant to be. Correct. You're led to places that you're supposed to be. And you know that saying that parang, you might reach your goal, but you will lose your soul? Parang it felt that. Eh. that parang in our sense, okay, hindi natin makukuha yung mga pangarap natin, pero at least masaya kami. Hindi man lang namin na, na, na reach yung rurok ng tagumpay na pag-iisip namin, pero at least buo kaming family. My, 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 my brothers and sisters are still here. We're still working together. We're still happily um, servicing our clients, and it's okay. I always say that we're really not in the business of clothes. What we are in the business of is actually dreams. You know, in your modern day, very godmother. I wanted to end with this. So you gave a TEDx talk in Atenea, <laughs> which I loved. And you said something there that really popped out to me. Well, a lot of things, but this particular thing. You said you were so glad that you chose this path of being a fashion designer. Kasi kung hindi, you would be the worst lawyer in the world, sabi mo. And that stood that's out. The, I think. <laughs> that's that stood out to me. Kasi the Raho we see now, diba, you are so good, but... If you had chosen nga another path, I don't think you'd be the worst, but you probably wouldn't thrive as much as you're thriving in the design world. So this is the question that I ask um, all the legends. Wow. Is oh that, um, what is your advice to everyone watching or listening on how to figure out the path they are meant to take in their life? You know, now, now that I'm, you know, a little, a little older, I think it's the stillness that is important and really to sort of like for, for, for a few moments, I know it's going to be difficult, but just calm down and just remain still and, and it will come to you and always begin and end and continue in a place of love only because if you love something, it will really, really thrive. Consider your, your career or your path or your fear life like a plant. Take care of it properly. Don't overwater it. Don't. That's why I love being a plantito, <laughs> is because it's it's there's a lot of truth into it. Be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself, but remain still, because clarity only comes forth once you're still. Because if you keep on running towards a particular goal, you sometimes forget that that might not be the goal for you. 
so deep and so powerful. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Raho, for sharing Thank your you, story. You look I amazing, truly, as uh, usual. <laughs> I truly, truly appreciate it. I'm sure that your story um, will inspire so many. Maraming salamat. Thank you.